Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. Today's video is about nine things that make middle-aged men look older. We'll talk about the mistakes that artificially age you, how you can avoid them, and the things men do to get their hair back, such as wearing this laser helmet. <laughs> In case you wondered, and if you're a regular here, you shouldn't be wondering, this video is 100% not sponsored. Frankly, I don't even know if this thing works. When you really think about it, men should look forward to middle age. We've learned lessons from our youth. We're more secure at work, we're more confident in our social situations, and we're set up to enjoy life. So why is middle age so feared? I think for a lot of men, it's the start of old age, and in a society where youth is valued very highly, it's a sad thing for many out there. Now, while well, a gentleman knows that every stage in life has its significance and beauty, very few want to appear and look older than they actually are, which is why we're doing this video today. Aging is a common topic around the gentleman's gazette here, probably because we all age. And when it comes to clothing, there is the aspect of age appropriateness. Basically, all it refers to is styles and types of clothing that look particularly well on a person of a certain age. Of course, the so-called rules aren't intended to limit your spirits or creativity in any way. They're merely a guideline to help you look your best. On that note, if you want to learn how to dress your age, please check out this video. So without further ado, the first mistake I see middle-aged men committing is behaving like times haven't changed. I find that more formal occasions are often a perfect display of men wearing things that are simply no longer appropriate. Just think of your Uncle Filbert, who clearly pulled out a jacket for your cousin Danny's wedding that is two sizes too big with shoulder pads like a football player and a buttoning point super low like a 1990s Armani jacket. Same goes with the wildly printed 90s silk tie that are just simply not in style anymore, and for good reason. Another one of those drastic changes is weight gain, which can make you look and feel very different. Conversely, some gentlemen experience the opposite, where they're losing mass and muscle, and it makes their bodies look scrawny and their faces drawn out or thin. An easy first step to combat these effects of aging is by dressing appropriately for your body type. And yes, I mean the body type you have today, not the one you had 30 years ago. The right clothing will help define, contain, and structure the look of your body in a way that is flattering. It will also hide imperfections. Of course, you guessed it, we filmed the video about exactly that subject. And as always, you can find all the links that are related to this video below in the description, or some of them also in cards. Now, quality clothes typically come with a lot of fabric reserve, and so having a good relationship with your alterations tailor allows you to change the look of your garments and just make them more flattering, no matter what your current physique is like. While an alterations tailor is certainly not a magician, he or she can truly help you to hide the signs of age that you sometimes encounter with clothing. If you want to learn what alterations a tailor can and cannot do, please reference this video here. Now, let's be honest. Many age-related changes to our body can be very drastic, and that pair of trousers that fit so snugly simply can't be altered and made larger anymore. Wishful thinking about the body type you had and the hopes that you maybe one day return to that will most likely just make you unnecessarily feel bad about yourself. The second mistake many middle-aged men are committing is to gravitate towards very trendy haircuts. For many men, one of the first signs of middle age is changes in their hair. It could be a receding hairline, thinning of the hair, or graying follicles. Yes, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Just compare videos from the early days of our YouTube channel to today, and you can surely see that my hairline is receding and thinning. Sometimes I even wonder what I look like bald, and that's what face app is for. Recently, a company even sent me a laser helmet that's supposed to bring my hair back. They said I should use it every second day for 16 weeks. So far, I'm only halfway in, but I haven't noticed any changes. So does this thing work? Frankly, I have no idea, but the fact that they sent me a bunch of stuff, such as these hair gummy vitamins, anti-hair loss serum and shampoo, and anti-thinning conditioner, 
as well as three in one hair growth formula supplements and note extra strength. I really doubt that this in itself is really doing it because why otherwise would they send me all that other stuff? I guess they take advantage of many men's fear of losing their hair and have an throw everything at it approach in the hope that something or altogether will surely help. Nah, I won't use all that stuff, but I don't really believe in it. But after all, I'll try the helmet because what I have to lose, my hair is coming out already. Obviously the degree and the positioning of the hair loss varies from person to person, but when thinking about your hairstyle, it makes sense to think about how much hair you still have and where you have it. 20 haircuts are designed for young men that exaggerate areas that simply aren't so flattering anymore for old men, especially if they have thinning hair. For instance, the modern pompadour accentuates the hair in the crown and the front, which is typically an area where middle-aged men lose their hair first or see a receding or thinning hairline. In the same vein, the extreme undercut buzzes away all the hair on your side, thus making the thinning top of your hair look even thinner than it already is. The way these trendy haircuts draw attention to your problem areas make you look even older than you actually are. That's why my recommendation for middle-aged men with a relatively full head of hair is to stick with classic haircuts that are not extreme in any way, shape or form. Not sure what a classic haircut is? Well, knowledge is power and you may feel quite powerless right now. So let this feeling sink in. No, just kidding. Of course, we have a video about our favorite classic style haircuts and you can check it out here. Or you could watch this honest, 100% unsponsored video about the five top hair loss treatments for men. Of course, ideally, you talk to your barber and see what he recommends for you and your hair. In progress strokes, here are some concepts you might want to consider. First, if you just start to seeing receding hairlines, you can focus on haircuts that emphasize volume in your hair. A good example for this would be the Ivy League hairstyle. That aside, taper fades can also give you the appearance of volume and they can be incorporated in most haircuts. Two, as your hair recedes further, consider more of a chopped look, which makes your hair look denser. The butch cut works very well here, as well as the Caesar's cut, which was named after the Roman emperor. Finally, as the bald patch on your head expands, hitting your receding hairline, it's probably time to go with something like a bus cut or a crew cut. You can even go with a smooth shaved head and bald can be beautiful and why not be bold? In fact, when the hair on your head starts to fail you, you can start growing a beard and many young men who turn bald early can grow impressive beards. For some tips on getting started with your facial hair, please check out our in-depth guide and video here. Aside from hair loss, most men will experience some graying that maybe even turn into white hair one day. But as a matter of fact, that can be a benefit of age, which brings us to mistake number three. Middle-aged men who try to hide the fact that they're graying or just deal with it the wrong way. Of course, while the first gray or white hair on your head can be a shock to you, it's not necessarily a bad thing. A gray streak, especially in dark hair, can make you look sophisticated and dashing. For this reason, we believe that for most men, embracing their gray hair rather than dyeing it is the way to go. Just look at Greg Brzezinski, for example. He just has an impressive hair color and a beard to match. Now, if you choose to dye your hair, just be aware of certain pitfalls. One, be cautious when you employ at-home dyes. They're typically quite strong and can just color your hair more than you'd like. The problem is this will be very noticeable to other people and you will actually appear older with your dyed hair than you would have looked without. Oftentimes, it can also make your hair color too uniform, which is obviously not natural anymore. And if it looks like you're trying to hide your gray hair, people will assume you try to hide your age which is the quintessential definition of making you look old. And just like the hair on your head changes, it does on your body too. And ignoring that is mistake number four. It's sadly ironic that for many middle-aged men at the time, they started losing their hair, the hair on their knuckles, their ears, their noses, and so forth, start growing excessively. For example, I have a few eyebrows here that always get super long unless they're groomed. Same thing is hair on my ear and hair on my nose. So 
I constantly have to use tweezers, pick them. And if you want to learn how to groom your eyebrows at home, please check out this video here. Obviously, hair coming out of your nostrils, unkempt eyebrows or hairs on your ears and your nose are something that people are going to see obviously right away. So making sure that you keep those in check first is the best course of action. Now, unkempt body hair on your chest and back isn't as immediately visible, but it can have an impact on your self-esteem. And if you want to learn how to take care of it, please check out this video here. And for the perfect tools to keep looking young, here is a list of our favorite grooming tools. Which brings us to mistake number five, neglecting your skincare. After all, when it comes to small things that have a big impact on how old we look, skincare is probably at the top. How you want your skin to look is obviously a personal choice. And while some people will not want to see any wrinkles, others just accept them as part of getting older. We don't argue in favor of having extensive skincare routines, but at least you should have some basic preventative skincare measures that protect you from UV radiation. The first and probably most important tool is therefore sunscreen. And ideally, you get an SPF anywhere from 30 to 50, depending on where you live. In an ideal world, especially when it's sunny, you put in the sunscreen every time you go outside and you're exposed to sun rays. I know that's hard to do, but because of that, many moisturizers these days that men are supposed to put on every day anyways contain SPF, so you don't have to think about it twice. In addition to that, wearing a hat and using a moisturizer will make your skin, especially in the face, look young for longer. A good product will include ceramides and hyaluronic acid, which is a molecule and a fatty acid that's naturally produced by our bodies. And it's supposed to help to protect the skin and hydrate it. Some on our team like the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Solution because it's not overly oily or greasy and it comes at a very reasonable price. I've also tried Tiege Hanley and Vitamin for my buddies, Aaron Marino, Antonio Santano. My wife is really into skincare and loves Beautypedia because they tell you exactly what works for what kind of skin. Because in truth, not all skincare products work for all types of skin. And so what works for you may not work for me and vice versa. Now let's close up that section with more general advice for most skin types out there. One, drink lots of water throughout the day because a proper hydration makes your skin look young and supple and hydrated. Two, get sufficient sleep, which is about eight hours from most people, give or take. So how is your sleep impacting your skin or the way you look? Well, a lack of sleep can cause an imbalance of hydration around your eyes, leading to those dark circles or eye rings that make you look tired and just older and worn out more. A lack of sleep also contributes to the stress and strain on your body, which makes us age even faster. Last but not least, wear sunscreen, avoid prolonged sun exposure, and use a moisturizer daily. I know it's all easier said than done. Personally, I drink a lot of water and I get enough sleep, but I have challenges putting on sunscreen and moisturizer regularly. The sixth mistake as a middle-aged man making is to wear clothing as a uniform, sometimes because they don't know what else to wear. Uniform dressing is a perfectly acceptable way for men who don't want to think about their clothes and just wear something and go about their day. I think famously, President Obama did that when he was in office. Now, uniform dressing is definitely not our style because we believe that a style should be a reflection of how you feel. But sometimes you might find yourself in a rut where you simply don't know what else to wear. And so you gravitate towards the same things over and over again. Also, as you age, those looks may be less flattering. For example, look at young Alain Delon in the 1967 movie Le Samurai. His unadorned gray suit looks really elegant because it highlights his youthfulness and his build. The plainness of his suit is intentional as to not distract from his figure. The exact same suit in the same color can look very conventional and boring on a middle-aged man. To make an outfit appear livelier without aging yourself in the process, we advocate for using color and texture in your outfit. Why? Because it will zest up your look and will probably be more fun and satisfying, especially in casual settings. Don't be afraid to go out there, try and experiment. That means 
pastel colors during the warm months of the year and more darker jewel tone colors during the colder months of the year. Also experiment with patterns such as checks, prints of whales and stripes and don't feel like you have to always stick with solids. Also rich textures such as tweed or flannel can be much more interesting than the same plain worsted fabrics you're used to from your business suits. Even if you are in more formal settings, you can still play with your accessories. Here, a relatively conservative pairing of a light blue shirt and a gray suit has been colorfully accessorized in a striking but subdued way. But there's another set of color and pop for middle-aged men, especially when it involves too much of a good thing. Which brings us to mistake number seven, middle-aged men wearing flashy things. While plain clothing can fade middle-aged men into the background, loud and bold colors can make you look gaudy. If something makes you feel good when you wear it, go ahead and wear it because you can in this day and age without major life consequences. However, if you're wearing flashy clothes to regain your youth, you're not gonna fool anyone. Also, too much color and vibrancy can give off the impression that you're trying to look younger, which in turn makes you look older, just like with the trendy haircuts we mentioned earlier. Extreme fashion forward clothes, bold lime and pink colors, as well as exaggerated slim cuts are not something that are typically associated with the seasoned maturity and self-awareness of middle-aged men. For that reason, once you hit middle age, go through your closet, get rid of those old 90s ties, those blazers that are just not you anymore and they don't flatter you. At the same time, don't just buy new clothes that are made for 20 year olds, but try to find something with more texture and subdued colors and classic patterns that will stand the test of time. For more details about all this, please check out this video here. Another mistake that can make middle-aged men look older is to wear those clunky comfort shoes with everything in your wardrobe. The wear and tear on a middle-aged body, along with the gain in confidence that comes with age, can often lead men to wear nothing but comfortable shoes. And when I say that, I mean physically comfortable shoes, because there's also an aspect of psychological comfort. Obviously, we dress for ourselves, but a choice of shoes can make or break an outfit. Some of the worst offenders of comfort shoes are typical tennis or workout shoes, as well as those clunky, square-toed slip-ons that men like to wear when they get a little older. The fact of the matter is that you can achieve the same or a similar level of comfort with much better looking dress shoes. Obviously, if you need to wear orthopedic shoes for medical reasons and you cannot afford a bespoke shoe from an orthopedic shoemaker, by all means, go ahead and wear them. We just don't want anyone to think that comfortable shoes are per se tennis shoes and ugly, but comfortable shoes can also be high quality leather shoes. It's the same thing with suits. Many men think that dress shoes or suits are per se uncomfortable when in fact just cheap, poorly constructed suits and dress shoes are uncomfortable, not the higher quality better ones. I get it. The black Oxfords have their time and place, but if you want some more casual footwear, maybe think about a loafer, maybe boat shoes or a chukka boot. Likewise, driving mocks or a tassel or a derby shoe can look really good. They can be quite comfortable, especially if you utilize insoles or orthopedic shoemakers can also work things in to existing quality shoes. This brings us to our ninth and final mistake that middle-aged men make, and that is not embracing one's age. As we said in the beginning, middle age can be an incredible time for gentlemen. Now, sadly, some men insist that they cling to their past. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Conversely, others accept defeat. They consider being middle aged the start of being old and the end of the life as they knew it. They consign themselves to old, boring style, to boring thoughts and activities, and that in itself will make them older faster. For the self-aware gentleman, however, middle age is the age of abiding friendships. 
of loving partners and great achievements. And a whole new world to explore. And he wouldn't waste a minute of it by allowing himself to be artificially aged by bad habits. So in a nutshell, embrace your middle age. In today's video, I'm wearing an outfit that would be appropriate for a middle-aged man. It consists of a turtleneck sweater in off-white. It's made with a fine, thin merino wool and comes from Uniqlo. It's paired with a camel hair sport coat with patch pockets and the leather buttons, which is a bit more casual because of the texture than a common business suit or navy worsted blazer. I'm pairing it with a pair of casual cotton pants in a brown and beige-ish Prince of Wales check pattern. As you can see, the pants are cut fuller with forward facing pleats because I have big thighs and a big bum and I dress for my body type as well as for my age. They're from Polar Ralph Lauren and my jacket is from Hart Schaffner Marks. My socks are two-tone solids in khaki and red. They're over the calf and from Fort Belvedere and they fit the overall neutral color palette while also picking up the red in my pocket square, which is made of a red with printed bunnies and on a wool silk fabric with hand rolled edges. And you can find both the socks and a pocket square in our store here. In terms of footwear, I went with a pair of low cut Chelsea boots in a nice chocolate brown suede leather from Loke 1880, which pairs well with my Ford Belvedere belt, which is part of a belt system, likewise in chocolate brown. 